Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Max and Ben Talk Hockey. And in this episode, Max and I interviewed goaltender Hunter Jones, who is currently playing on the Peterborough Peets of the OHL and was selected 59th overall by the Minnesota Wild in the 2019 NHL Draft. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And also, don't forget to add us on Twitter on Max and Ben Talk H1. Um, that is Max and Ben Talk H1. And hope you guys enjoyed the video. So my first question is, being from the same town as Wayne Gretzky, how did hockey impact your childhood? Um, I think it's obviously pretty cool, like playing hockey uh, in the same town as, uh, you know, the Wayne, Wayne Gretzky growing up here and playing here. Uh, and I think it was actually pretty cool playing for the Peets because Wayne got to play for the Peets for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, Walter Gretzky still comes around the rinks uh, as much as he can and uh, it was funny. Um, I was actually playing in the, like, kind of like the uh, hockey night in Brantford last summer. And it was kind of like a celebrity game, raising charity or whatever for uh, the city. And, um, yeah, my, Walter was one of my coaches on my team. So he was just around the rink. And it was a pretty uh, cool atmosphere to have. And, you know, he's a great guy, great hockey guy. And, um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool for anybody growing up in Brantford, like, uh, you know, playing hockey and just trying to aspire to be, um, you know, just some kid from Brantford to, you know, make it and get on through. So I think, you know, I've represented uh, myself and uh, the city of Brantford well, and I've tried to give back to the community as well and stuff that I've done. But um, overall, it's been uh, pretty fun. Uh, Walter is Wayne's dad, right? Yes, he is. Oh yeah, that's, that's that's actually really cool that you've got yeah. him, that they met uh, Wayne Gretzky's dad. Yeah, he comes around the ranks all the time. Like he's got really nothing to do. I mean, he's getting older now. I mean, you can only uh, imagine uh, how old Wayne's getting, and Walter's still kicking around. So it's good on him for to get out of the house and um, like to be at the rink and say hello to everybody. But uh, he's like an icon around here now. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. Um, so you've won a few different numbers so far. Um, is there any meaning behind number 29? Um, I've kind of always worn 29 throughout my minor hockey career. Um, but other than that, like, I mean, I started wearing number 20 uh, when I first started playing goalie. And then um, I play lacrosse in the summertime or played lacrosse. I don't play it uh, anymore competitively. Um, but I wore 19 there. Um, but I always tried to get number 29 because uh, just for like Mike Palmatier, he's a, a guy that I uh, like to watch when I was younger, just on YouTube and stuff like that. He wore number 29. And, um, you know, I just think it's a really cool number to to have. And the last goalie to wear number 29 in Peterborough was uh, my goalie coach and assistant coach. So I think uh, that's kind of a cool attribute to have too. And yeah, it's kind of just unique because there's not many goalies nowadays wearing number 29, and I think it looks good on my back. And that's the biggest <laughs> thing for me is, uh, like, how it looks on your back. Sometimes <laughs> the 30s are pretty generic. So, uh, um, yeah, I like I like the number 29. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, uh, who did you say again that uh, you like watching that wore 29? I think it's Mike Palmatier wore 29 for a bit. And I think I think Felix the Cat, Felix Potvin wore twenty nine for a bit. Ah, I I don't know the first guy, but I definitely know Felix Potvin. Oh yeah, yeah. Mike Palmatier used to play for the Leafs, I think. Oh, that's that's cool. Uh, I wear number thirty because of Henrik Lundqvist. I'm also a goalie, actually. Oh yeah, Henrik Lundqvist is an awesome goalie to look up to. That guy is uh, has has been around for quite some time. Great guy to watch uh, on TV for sure. And um, even a better guy in the community, honestly, like um, he's a killer guitarist and um, <laughs> one of the best, one of the best dressed goalies in the league, I'd say. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. I've seen the media day uh, uh, interviews with him. He's like, he always brings style. Oh yeah. Very well dressed. Yeah. Um, and how did you become a goalie? And were your parents happy with your decision to play that position? 
Uh, so it's kind of a long story. So I became a goalie um, when I was just uh, like eight or nine, I want to say. I was playing uh, house league hockey as a f- defenseman. And the one game, uh, the person that was playing goalie said, I want to play forward one more time before um, I play goalie the rest of my life. And I was like, well, my dad's tying up my skates. And I just look over to him and I say, well, do you mind if I play goalie tonight? And he's like, sure. So I go in the net. I get absolutely shelled. And it was like, I had a great time. But, but like, we definitely lost the game. Um, but anyway, we're in the McDonald's drive through after. I remember it like it was yesterday. And we're getting, like, ice cream cones or whatever. And uh, I look at my dad from the back seat. And I ask him, like, can I be a goalie? And my dad made me a deal. And he said, um, you know, if you want to be a goalie, then we'll mark this day on the calendar. And if one year from today, you still want to be a goalie, we can switch. And I said, that's fair. Let's do that. So I played one more year as a defenseman. And then a year from that day, I asked him again. And that was it. I, I never turned back from there and just kind of worked my way up. My dad was a goalie. So uh, him and I used to go on the ice all the time, and that's who really taught me how to play up until I was about 16 years old. And then I actually got myself a more technical goalie coach uh, who I still work with to this day. Um, but my dad's been a big influence in my life. And, um, yeah, my parents have been a huge factor with uh, me being a goalie. And um, that's kind of the story of how it became. Why did you make that switch? Why did I make that switch? Like, yeah, like, how old were you? Well, I would have been, uh, would have been like, 10 years old at the time, nine, nine to nine turning 10. Um, it's hard to remember. It was so long ago. But I think I was around that age. Um, yeah, I think that would be accurate. Yeah, that's actually really cool. I mean, my parents never played any hockey. Uh so it's just my dad just like really likes watching it and I yep. like watching it and I just wanted to play hockey. And I played one day when I was seven and I just really loved the position. And Yeah, it's and, a very unique position, that's for sure. Yeah. And then I asked my dad and he said, Sure. And then yeah, it's basically how it started for me. Yeah, it's uh it's one of the best positions I would think. I mean, it's uh the spotlight is always on the goalie and it's a very high pressure situation, but I mean, if you can handle it, it's, it's a really fun position to play. And yeah, I, I feel you for that one about, you know, you play everything else on the ice, but I mean, when you're in the net and you just feel like you want to play there and you just know. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, my next question is, do you have any off season activities you do during like the summer when you're not on the ice? Yeah, so this summer I've actually been doing a lot. Um, I bought my first golf membership this summer, and I've been doing a lot of golfing. I golf almost every day now this summer. It's been kind of my big hobby because of the extended off season that we've had. But uh, usually when I have a regular off season, I still do a little bit of golfing. Um, but I do a lot of mountain biking. I do a lot of downhill mountain biking with my dad, which is kind of a extreme sport. But um, I got into that with him. My dad was a big cross country mountain biker uh, when he was younger and he did that with my mom as well when they got married and they were together. Um, So I was kind of already brought into that uh, growing up. I was always on a bike and it's good conditioning and good cardio and builds strength. So um, I'm on my bike a lot in the summertime. And then uh, other than that, I just kind of throw the lacrosse ball around with my friends and uh, that's about it. Like a little bit of basketball here and there just kind of other sports in the summertime that I like to play. Um, Especially at the start of the summer when I just get off my skates, I don't like to go on the ice that much and kind of have a little bit of a break, but I like to stay active. So I uh, do other sports. Yeah. Kind of the same for me. I've been doing a lot of basketball, rowing, uh, soccer occasionally, and a lot of running and biking I've, I've been doing. Yeah, that's good, man. That's always be, uh, good to um, just be doing things to keep in shape and stay fit. It's good. Yeah, I uh, I usually 
work out with my friends and also since I'm doing my own for my high school. Uh, they're making us do a lot for uh, rowing. So it's like on the first practice, we did like 200 of these things called jumpies, which is burpees without the going into a push up. Yep. You just jump and squat. Yep. Uh, and I did like 200 of those. And I was sore. And they said, by the way, you have to do 25 push ups, 10 pull ups, and a 45 minute cardio workout at home. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it it actually isn't as bad as people think it is. Yeah. It it's for two days, um, either Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, which are the three days we don't have rowing, and you pick whichever two days you want to do them. So I did one today and I'm doing one tomorrow. It's not yep. difficult actually. Well, that's good then. Getting uh getting in good shape. Yeah. Uh, and while playing AAA hockey, were you noticed by a lot of scouts? And if yes, what did they say to you? So my minor hockey career wasn't that amazing. I, um, so I played minor hockey in Brantford for a little bit. And then I actually made the, uh, transition to play in the GTHL in Toronto. Uh, and I played, uh, I want to say, I think it was five years In Toronto, I played two years with Mississauga Reps, one year with Don Mills Flyers, and then last two years with Mississauga Reps. So um, the strategy behind me going to Toronto was that I was going to be playing on not a great team, and I was supposed to be, you know, getting a lot of shots and developing as much as I could because, uh, you know, GTHL is really good players. You have guys like Akil Thomas, Ryan Merkley, um, like those type of guys, like shooting on you all the time throughout minor hockey. So it was really good development for me. And I didn't want to be on, you know, their teams where I wasn't going to get as many shots. I wasn't going to drive to Toronto to, you know, have a 15 save shutout. So um, in my minor midget year, I was on the second worst place team in Ontario. So we won two games all year. So I was really skeptical about how my OHL draft was going to turn out because I wasn't on a winning team. Um, but my first interview, I think was with the Guelph storm and that changed my whole perspective on, on playing hockey on that team. Um, they read me a scouting report when I was in the GM's office and it was all like great things. And I was like, so confused. And it was like a huge weight was lifted off my shoulders because they all, they just said like nothing but good things. They had nothing negative to say about my play. And even though I was on a horrendous team and that from that day on, I just changed dramatically. Um, playing wise, I, I started playing way better and I started getting more interest from scouts across the league. And I think by the end of the year and right before the draft, I had talked to 16 out of the 20 teams in the league or 21 teams in the league, whatever it is. And, um, yeah, it just, it it was still a a stressful day on OHL draft day, uh, sitting there and, uh, waiting for my name to kind of pop up on the screen. And sure enough, uh, I'm sitting there on the couch and my family's surrounded by me and, um, the Pedro Pete's, uh, followed me on Twitter. And that's when I looked up, uh, at the screen and I saw that my name was on the screen and I was like, wow, that's unbelievable my dad was in tears and um because he was he was very unsure if I was going to get drafted to the OHL or not and he had been driving to Toronto for five years and put in so much effort and same with my mom just being supportive for me and it was just a big question mark if I was going to be drafted and 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 let alone drafted at a decent spot in the draft to give myself a chance so um it ended up working out great and um you know I wouldn't have changed a thing Wow, that's actually really cool. Uh, that was a pretty pretty interesting story, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I just, I've been playing for my hometown team, and I mean, sadly, it's only B-level, and we won state championships, and we've always been, like, and we're still really stacked, and it just, like, sucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, because we're in B, and we can never progress up to, like, double A or A. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, like, I've always been wanting a move. And, 
luckily my high school has a really good hockey team. Yep. So if I make the JV this year and then move on to varsity, that would actually be a big jump. Yep. Yeah, and also a lot of scouts notice our school because Kyle Palmieri went to our high school for two years. Yep. So he was he was definitely scouted. So I know that we're scouted a lot. Yeah, that's good, man. Just keep working hard. That's all I can say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my next question is, if you could meet with one current or past NHL player or a goalie, who would you meet with? Um, I think that's tough to say because, um, I, you know, I've met a lot, like, recently, like, now that I've been um, – pushed into that crop of playing level. I've, I've met a lot of NHLers and it was really cool, like going to my first training camp in Minnesota last year and, and meeting like Devin Dubnik and Alex Stalock and even the rest of the guys in, on the team. It was uh, the first, I walked into training camp and my first person that introduced himself to me was Jared Spurgeon. And I don't know if you guys know who that is, but um, he's a the little yeah. defenseman who plays on the wild and unbelievable player but that was just kind of a cool moment for me but I think if I could talk to one person today um you know I would love to sit down and talk to uh like Carey Price or um you know Frederick Anderson some of those like um long time starting goalies that just have a quick chat with them like um there's not much difference on the work that I put in compared to them now I mean it's pretty similar stuff but I think it'd be cool to just compare stories and just talk about, um, you know, their cool moments and, and stuff like that. And, I mean, they've gone through it all, and they're nearing the end of their careers. So, I mean, I'm just starting mine. So, it's I think it's a pretty cool uh, – that's a pretty cool thing. Yeah. Even, even yeah. as a Bruins, I'm a huge Carey Price fan. He's like yeah, my favorite player right now. He's a very, very, very well-structured goalie. Super composed yeah. in the net. And, like, he knows how to balance everything. He's got – um he's got a family at home and loves his uh he loves doing the outdoor stuff with the fishing and uh all that stuff so he's a he's a he seems like a really good guy so I, i'd love to talk to him one day yeah yeah and even though i'm also a new york rangers fan i definitely also want to talk to carter hart yeah he's actually a really good guy uh, me and him um i actually met carter uh when we were at team canada uh in calgary we were um, skating together at uh, so Team Canada has a goalie camp every summer, and they do their evaluations through um, the U twenties, U seventeens, and U eighteens. So uh, when Carter Hart was trying out for the U twenties, I was uh, just starting with the U seventeens, and um, you know, we we caught up there and chat chit chatted for a bit, and I was able to watch him when he was still uh, you know raw and junior, but um, great guy, great hair. He has great hair, and uh, yeah, he's a good guy. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, and speaking about the WHC te- uh, 17 tournament, how did it feel representing your country uh, for the WHC U17 tournament? Um, it was really cool, actually. I mean, um, I was able to uh, represent my country a couple times, and um, that same year I was actually able to put on two jerseys with the Canada logo. And I think it was pretty cool to be a part of that. And, um, you know, that's that, that year I actually was able to pick up two silver medals. I was with the, uh, under 17 team in Sault Ste. Marie. And, um, I was ag- again with the, uh, under 19 team with, um, the world junior A challenge. So when I was playing for the Stovall spirit and the OJHL, uh, I had made the uh, World Junior A Challenge Team Canada East team, and we went to Bonneville, Alberta, and we finished uh, second place there as well. Um, and, you know, both times, every, anytime you get to represent your country and put that logo on, it's always a, always a privilege. And um, even this year when I went to the World Junior Selection Camp uh, or when I played in the Summer Showcase and against Sweden and uh, the USA. It was an unbelievable experience to go up against uh, those caliber players. It's it's such a different level of of uh, compete with the guys that are your age. Like usually when um, you go to like NHL camp, you have ages of 
uh, all variations. You know, you have uh, 21 year olds and it varies all the way up to 34 year olds. Um, but when you're with team Canada and you're at the under twenties, you know, you're going up against everybody who's 19 and 18 years old. And, um, you know, those guys are the best in their country and it's a really good challenge. So, I mean, for me, it was a really fun experience to be a part of that. And, uh, it's something I won't forget. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's awesome actually. Yeah. Um, my next Sorry, man, I missed that. Yeah, did I cut out there? Yeah, you did. It's all good. All right. Um, my next question is: Do you have a favorite pregame meal before games and practices? Favorite pregame meal. Um, practices, it, it doesn't really matter for me. I mean, I just don't like to eat something heavy before practice or else it might come up on the ice. Um, <laughs> but for pregame meal, um, you know, like chicken and rice is good. I like eating that a lot. Like my billets, um, I don't know if you guys know what butter chicken is, but it's like, um, chicken and then like rice, it's chicken and rice. That's it. And then there's like some sauce that goes on it and it's like a, it's kind of got like a little, um, I don't even know how to describe it. Um, like, I'm, it's like kind of like a spicy sauce that goes on top and it's like, it just sits light in your belly. And if it digests properly, I should be able to go to the bathroom before the game. If not, you know, oh, well, but, um, I usually try to eat four hours before the game. So it gives me time to digest the food and then go out and perform and use the energy from it. But, uh, during the game, I actually don't eat anything. Um, I feel if I eat something that I might throw up, I don't like eating like food unless it's like over time, then I'll have like a couple bites of like a granola bar or some apple slices or something like that. But I do drink a lot of Gatorade during the game, uh, intermission just to regen. Um, but yeah, I would say that's, um, my most go-to pregame meal, chicken and rice. Yeah, I mean, for me, I had the morning slot for my home race a lot. So uh, the usually the only thing I could really grab was just like a banana or just like some quick oatmeal. Yep. Uh, but now we have like the afternoon slot. So I'm like getting like a salad or something light because I'm probably going to eat like an hour and a half before game time. Some, yep. Something like that. So yep. don't want to be too full. No, definitely not. There'll be a big brick out there. Yeah, definitely. Um, and how's the transition from AAA hockey to junior A hockey in Ontario? Um, it was a big change for me. I mean, I mean, going out of uh, AAA hockey to my first OHL camp, it was like going from um, you know, the OHL to my first NHL camp. It's just a bit, uh, a bit quicker. Like everything just comes at you a bit faster and you just have to learn to adapt and your eyes, you know, have to pick up on the shots. And I think that was the biggest thing is that um, the AAA to OHL was a lot harder for me because, you know, I hadn't really seen, you know, a 20 year old shoot on me when I was 15 years old. Like that's a, that's a pretty uh, hard shot when you think about it. And the guys in the OHL can shoot pretty hard. And I mean, some of those guys are expected to, you know, play NHL games and or finish the year out in the OHL and then uh, play NHL games the following year. So it's, it's definitely a challenge. Uh, it was a challenge, but I think going to junior A first actually helped me out a lot um, with my development because I was able to kind of play at a lower level, but still go up against 16 to 20 year olds and, you know, uh, see those shots and be up against those guys. And um, no, I thought it really helped me out. And then now that I'm, finished playing in the OHL um you know skating with the uh the pro guys is not too much of a change and uh you know I'm grateful for that yeah that's really cool yeah um what do you consider your greatest strength that separates you from other goalies well I think the thing that you can't teach me is how tall I am uh, I think that's a huge strength of mine is how tall I actually am. And I get that from my mother's side. 
Um, but I think alongside with that is just how athletic I am in my body being for how tall I am. Like I'm not just a, a slow guy in the net. I actually can utilize my size and still get around pretty quickly. And I think that's a huge part of, uh, you know, my game and um, how I play hockey. So I think, um, yeah, I think that's one of my biggest strengths. Yeah, I mean, same for me. I'm around five foot eight. Yep. And I mean, for a 13, 14 year old, that's a bit above average. So, yep. On skates, it's like five, 10, five, 11 on goalie skates. That's tall. Yeah. So, I, and I'm not like that slow because my coaches actually make me skate laps with the players. Yeah, that's always good. You should always try to beat the players because uh definitely picks up your cardio game and, especially when uh, your players appreciate it when there's a delayed penalty and you have to skate hard to the bench and you get there fast. It definitely gives your team some more time. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my other greatest strength is probably uh, my glove side. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm really good at like reflect. Um, at, my reflexes are really good. Yep. Good uh, hands. Yeah. So I can glove a lot. Uh, I can glove a lot. Also, it also just shooting glove hand is always really fun, especially yeah. when the puck hits the glove and like you know you have it. Oh yeah, right in the pocket. Yeah. Uh, and my next question is: When did you realize that you had a chance at being drafted really high in the 2019 draft? And what emotions were you feeling when you were drafted by the Wild? Well, that day was really hectic. But I'll answer your first question first. Um, I think when I just I it was kind of a an up in the air year. It was my draft year, and I had played um, one year in the OHL prior to that, and I didn't have the greatest year. And our team as a whole didn't have a great year at all. Um, but they were putting their faith in me to come back strong and and be the guy they wanted me to be and play uh, the fifty five to sixty game role. And I came back and I knocked it out of the park. And I think um, you know about. Uh, quarter halfway into the season you start getting a lot of hype thrown around on Twitter and uh, NHL teams are calling to sit down with you and talk to you and they want to see what kind of person you are and I think that's when my eyes kind of opened up and saw that you know I could be a, a fairly high draft pick and the first rankings came out when I was in high school or in university class one day and uh, I was ranked a C and that's like a sixth to seventh round pick. And I, I remember my buddy sitting right next to me and I said to him, I'm like, by June, it's, it's not going to be a C anymore. And um, that was kind of the fuel of my fire. I think at the start of the year was seeing that C rated prospect. And I knew I didn't, that's not what my goal was. And I knew what I was capable of. And uh, I came back and I, you know, I played really great and uh, yeah, I ended up being picked by the wild, but I'll go through that story now. Um, so the wild had interviewed me, um, earlier in the year. Um, but I don't think they interviewed me at the combine. They might have, but they weren't really on my radar for drafting a goalie. I didn't think that the wild were going to pick me. I was sitting there and, um, you know, three goalies had gone before me and I'm sitting there in the second round and my agent had texted me saying, um, if St. Louis doesn't pick you at 62, you're going to be going to New Jersey in the third round on their first pick. And I said, okay. And then Carolina had the 59th selection and they traded away that pick because they had already drafted, I think two players in the second round already. So they had three second round picks. Um, so they, tr Minnesota wild trades for that 59th pick and I'm sitting there and, I'm talking with my dad. I'm like, man, this is what my agent just sent to me. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I stopped talking because I hear they're announcing the selection. And then sure enough, from the Peterborough Peets, Hunter Jones, and it all happened so fast after that. I hugged my family, walked down the steps, get my coat taken by the Minnesota Wild Public Relations. And they walk me to the draft table. I shake everybody's hand. And then from that point on, um, I head up, head behind backstage, and my Peter O'Pete's general manager was there, and he shook my hand and told me congratulations. And then 
uh, there's a lot of that throughout the day and um, had to go through all media and sign some cards for like upper deck and stuff like that and take some pictures and then um, just go meet some more Minnesota wild people, get my flights figured out because the next day I had to be in Minnesota for, <laughs> for training camp. So it wow. was a pretty quick, it was a pretty quick turnaround for me to get on one plane to another. And um, yeah, it was an amazing day. I enjoyed it. I went, I love that everybody was there that supported me and uh, really fortunate that, you know, people from my family were able to fly out to Vancouver and, um, you know, on their own money and their own pocket to be able to, you know, come out and support me. And, uh, you know, I think they wanted to be there too. So, I mean, some of those people uh, were there when the day I was born and that's a big day for them too. So I think uh, it was a great day. Wow. It's actually amazing. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, what, would, what would you say are your three favorite things about hockey? My three favorite things about hockey? Well, I think number one is ultimately like having fun with the people that I'm around. Like the people I've met my, my best friends and um, like people that I will know forever through hockey. And I think that's definitely one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing about hockey and two is probably just playing in front of fans and like that was it's such a a cool experience being like my experience in Peterborough was unbelievable because it's such a small community and you know you're such an icon there and they treat you with so much respect when you're around the town like you get recognized at the mall when you're with your teammates and you know people you're just eating you know lunch at the food court at the mall and then people will walk up to you and ask for your autograph on a napkin so it's just like I think those would probably be top two is, you know, playing with my friends and, you know, meeting people with the game and, uh, excuse me. And then, um, yeah, the fans and I think giving back too. I think that would be probably my number three is giving back to the community. And, you know, I love coaching like little, little goalies and, you know, people that are still trying to learn how to play and, um, you know, I think it's cool for them when they step on the ice and they're eight, nine years old and, you know, they see me out there and they've been going to the hockey games at the Pete's for a long time. And they're like, oh, my goodness, that's Hunter Jones. And then I come over and talk to them. And it's just kind of like because uh, I, I was in their shoes once, too. I was a young goalie and, um, you know, guys from junior hockey would come out on the ice and they're all big and tall. And, you know, I'm starstruck. I'm like, holy crap, I get to be on the ice with this guy. And you know, now the roles are reversed. And um, I think that's the really cool part about hockey is that it really unites, you know, communities and, um, and people. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, my last question is, how does it feel giving back to your community and your charity? and remembering like where you came from, Brantford and like trying to make a difference there? Yeah, like I said, it's, uh, it's an unbelievable thing to do. And I, I, I think more people should do it. And um, yeah, for the past two years, I've been doing the, the food drive public skate around Christmas time, if I'm at home and it's been really supportive for, um, you know, the people that have came and they've donated food and uh, it just feels good to give back to communities and, and like people that come to see you play and they pay attention to your hockey career. And um we do a whole bunch of community events during the year when I'm with the Pete's and um, you know, whether if it's school visits or, you know, we're uh, packing boxes for unprivileged uh, families like overseas for Christmas. Um, you know, I always try to give back to the community and, and I think that's why I've, I've won the community service award for my team uh, two years in a row now is just because they recognize how much, you know, I actually do for the community and, it's not to say that uh, other players on my team don't because um, everybody has a hand in it and um, you know, I can't do it all. And um, you know, I think that's the really cool part about being a hockey player um, at an elite level is that, you know, people look up to you and um, doing the right things. sets a good example for others and then others follow. And um, no, I think it's a, a really good thing to do. Yeah. That's, actually awesome yeah i do i do some stuff uh for my synagogue we do a lot of work with like the homeless shelter 
and uh, a lot of food drives. Yeah, it's always really fun because first of all, you hang out with your friends while um, doing this like good deed, and also yeah, exactly. you're doing this, and also you're doing this, and you're um, helping out someone, which is really great. Hundred percent. Good on you for doing that. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for this interview. This was actually awesome. No worries, boys. I um, yeah, I have no problem doing it, and. Um, you know, I wish you guys the best of luck moving forward with your hockey careers. Just keep Thank working you. hard and, um, you know, don't let little things get you down. And, um, yeah, just make every day count and uh, make sure every day you're just doing something, something little to get better. And I think that's the biggest advice I can give is don't waste a day and always utilize every day and um, just be smart about it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah good, no good, good luck. Good luck playing pro. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, Wild's a great organization. <laughs> yeah. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Talk All to right, you later. Bye.